Hi, my name is Dr. O'Perry, and we're going to be sharing a few things about clonidine. Clonidine is a well-known drug worldwide that's given for high blood pressure. A lot of patients, however, do take this blood pressure because they can't find something easy to control their blood pressure. They've got to be put most of the time on multiple medications to lower their blood pressure. There's, however, one catch. Almost 90% of the patients that I see in the ICU as a hospitalist that I'm called about in the middle of the night to what? To help with controlling their blood pressure. Almost 90 to 95 percent of them are on clonidine. This is a strange phenomenon that I discovered that when we take those patients off of clonidine who have been on multiple medicines and high doses of clonidine, the moment we do that and we treat the blood pressure with other agents, we eventually arrive at a titrated point where those patients do not need clonidine anymore. So the question arises, do we really need clonidine in those patients? And should we, if we do need it transiently, should we continue patients on clonidine on a permanent basis? I think the answer is really no, for one simple reason. If you are giving clonidine to a patient without measuring the levels of clonidine in the blood, you don't know exactly what you're doing. You're just doing guesswork. And in the days of evidence-based medicine, just simply providing clonidine with whatever dose you are giving it without checking levels is a very poor practice of medicine. And I'll tell you why. Clonidine has a very low therapeutic range of 1 to 2 nanograms per mil. Almost like the other classic drug, digoxin. Okay? So when you give clonidine, it will lower blood pressure at this range, 1 to 2 nanograms per mil. I am yet to find any hospital, however, that measures clonidine levels. So, not too surprisingly, the next point that I'm going to show you here about the ranges, which might shock you as a doctor, as a nurse, at 4 nanograms per mil, clonidine has no effect on lowering blood pressure. Zero effect. At 10 nanograms per mil, clonidine actually raises blood pressure. So, here's a clue. Let's look at this again. At 1 to 2 nanograms per mil, blood pressure is lowered. At 4 to 5, no effect. At 10 nanograms per mil, rising blood pressure. So let's take one example of three patients. One weighing 80 pounds, one, one 20 pounds, and another one, 160 pounds. Clonidine is given sometimes to some patients at 0.1 milligram at night. So we'll use the lowest dose, 1.1 milligram at night. And sometimes I've seen patients, particularly in the last three weeks, on 0.3 milligrams four times a day. Typically, it's three times a day. But I saw one Q6. So let's even say three times a day, TID. You have 0.1, lowest, 0.9, maximum. So nine times difference, okay, between what you can give the lowest dose and the highest dose. So let's say you take this 80-pound patient and you give 0 0.1 milligram at night and you check the levels and the levels come back as what? 1.5. Okay? And you take the 120 pound and it's 1 nanogram per mil. And the 160 pound, 0 0.75 nanogram per mil. Assuming that everything else is equal. If the blood pressure comes down nicely in this patient and in the 120 pound patient, right? It probably won't come down as well with the 0.1. So what do you do? You double the dose. If this doesn't come down well enough, you double the dose. And then you triple the dose. 
If there are other reasons why the blood pressure remains high, however, like marital stress, going through a divorce, bills piling up, bankruptcy pending, children on drugs, or even that patient may be on drugs, cocaine, marijuana, and all those other sympathetic activators. What you end up with is a patient who, even this 80 pound patient, because you stack them on 0.2 milligrams BID, halfway in between the 0.1 and the 0.9, right? You stack them on that drug, and what do you get? It was 1.5 nanograms per mil, if you measured it, if you measured it. But let's assume you didn't, right? And you start at 0.2 milligrams BID instead of 0.1 milligram at night. You have, in effect, given what? Four times the amount of dose that will be effective. So what happens to the blood pressure? The one nanogram Per mil, 1.5 nanogram per mil, if you just go by simple pharmacokinetics, okay? Now it becomes what? 6 nanogram per mil. Because you got 4 times the dose and then 4 times the level, okay? So we are assuming that simple pharmacokinetics, okay? Those are dose and the levels will increase, okay? So what happens is that you don't get any effect at all with lowering your blood pressure. So you add another drug. Maybe that will have an effect. But if it doesn't have an effect, you then what? Instead of going 0.2 milligrams BID, you go 0.3 milligrams BID. So you go from 6 nanograms per mil to what? 9 nanograms per mil. Right? But that's not going to work because it's already gone past its therapeutic levels. So what do you do when the patient comes to the clinic? You go from 0.3 milligrams BID to what? 0.3 milligrams TID. Here's the problem. Now your levels are now what? 13.5 nanogram per mil, right? You are now at the cutoff point, way beyond it. And what do you hear? Hi, Dr. Perry. I need you upstairs. The patient is not able to move his or our what? Left side. A stroke. Because a patient is not only taking this drug, which has no levels, it raises their blood pressure. And they've been in the ER coming in for chest pain since 8 a.m. in the morning, and their drugs have not been renewed. So not only has the clonidine done its damage in raising the blood pressure too high, okay? It had no effect. And now, an insult upon injury because of withdrawal of clonidine. When you withdraw clonidine, you release the catecholamine effect. Okay? So, the catecholamines are released in a surge into the bloodstream, which will further raise the blood pressure once that patient stops taking the clonidine. And you end up with what? A stroke. Keep that in mind. Whenever you give it clonidine, therefore, Keep in mind that it has such a narrow therapeutic range, 1 to 2 nanograms per mil, and nobody measures clonidine levels like we do digoxin levels. So there is no reason for you to give a drug that operates at only a narrow therapeutic range of 1 to 2 nanograms per mil when you're not going to measure those levels to see how effective they are. What's the point? We all measure ditch levels. If you're going to give clonidine, you really should be measuring clonidine levels. If you give digoxin, you measure digoxin levels. If you give anticonvulsants, you do measure the levels. Now, if it's beyond the capacity of your clinic or what? The hospital to routinely measure clonidine levels, then there really is no point giving it because far more patients who are on clonidine have poor blood pressure control and you might say, well, the reason they are clonidine is because their blood pressure could not be controlled any other way. Now, are you adding to the problem or eliminating the problem if you do that without checking any levels? Chances are high that you're what? Adding to the problem. So there are three other reasons besides hypertension why you can use clonidine, and that's how I'm going to close it today, which is restless leg syndrome, opiates withdrawal if you're narcotics and you're withdrawing from it, and just jitters, which is what? <laughs> the shaking that occurs 
a lot of times in patients who are withdrawing from alcohol. Thank you.